So, Lady Ada, it's a uh, new party time. Let's do this thing. Ready? It's a new. Okay. New, new, new. It's new product time. Okay. Um, let's just dive right in. Um, Neopixel strips. We have Neopixel strips, and these are um, black flex strips, and they're really neat because they have not just red, green, and blue, but also white pixels as well. So they're kind of a neutral color. I think it's like 4,000 degrees Kelvin or something. Check the product page for the exact or closest approximation of the color temperature of the white LEDs. Basically, it means that instead of trying to make white or a dim white light by mixing red, green, and blue, you can actually have a white LED. Um, and it looks much better and uses a lot less power because mm -hmm. it's like one LED um, instead. So we have this in 60 LED per meter, which is this one. I think that's also 60. Yeah, and then yeah. this is, this shows what it looks like lit. Uh, and then off, and so you can see it's a black flex PCB and it comes in the casing. You just use a NeoPixel library that is um, compatible with RGBW. Um, Do you want to go to the overhead? Yeah, sure, we can. This is, this is the um, 144, so you can see it's purple and then the white comes in. And it's incredibly bright, so it, it color cycles between, um, you know, the RGB of rainbow and then um, it has a white strip that comes through. So just like the photo, but yeah, very bright and, and very white. Very good if you want to have like lighting, use it for lighting because you can have color and white. So like yeah. the white is a, is a true white color. Okay. And uh, we have some other versions that looks yeah, like that's, here as well. So that's the 144. Yeah. So it's 144 LEDs per meter. So it's a wow. lot of LEDs. Um, but it looks really cool and it's very smooth. And then, um, so you can show just the strips. You know, yeah, the, so the it's even higher density. So it's yeah, super high density. It's as close as possible. And then um, that's lit, and this is off. So you can see they're really close. You can cut in between, but they're very, very close together. And then we also have um, 30 LED per meter. So much farther apart, but less yeah. expensive. Maybe you don't need it as much. And then um, you can just show the animation. For it. So that's, not that. no, that's 30. Yeah. So that's 30 LEDs per meter, and then this is 60 LEDs per meter. Yeah. Yep. So you you basically decide which one you want. You need like higher density, more expensive, more power, lower density, more flexible. Um, you know, you get more distance for your pixels. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up. This is a uh, funky hub. It's a USB hub. Works like pretty much any USB 2.0 hub, but it also has Ethernet built in. So it's really really handy when you want to use it with something like oh. the Pi Zero or the Pi A Plus. Because it gives you Ethernet as well as USB. Now you might be wondering, like, well, if I have the Pi Zero and add this, it's it, I should just get the Pi B Plus or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can, but maybe you want to just temporarily set up your network, connect, you know, do all the stuff you want to do, and then you can disconnect the hub when you're done. It's still kind of handy because it's an all-in-one yeah. hub, and it's like you you know sometimes you don't need all four ports. Instead of that fourth port, it has a USB to Ethernet converter. And we really like this one. It's com compatible with like every operating system on Earth. It's an older chipset called like the AX88. 725 or something, and it, uh, it works very well. It seems like the future where the computer makers just put one port on the side. Yeah, I and mean, it's just like, like yeah. good luck. I mean, the Beagle Bone Black has but. Ethernet, but like if they, you know, if they made one without, or if you have another single board computer that has USB but doesn't have networking, or maybe, it's, what, maybe, maybe it has Wi Fi built in but on Ethernet, you can swap this in. And Ethernet's just really easy, especially with Linux, you know, compared to Wi Fi, because you just click and you're connected. You don't have to like log in and try to figure out what the password is and all that yeah. stuff. Okay. All right, and then one more bef besides uh, the stars of the show are as Kate and you, Lady Ada, but we yes. have one more and then, and then one more. So this is from Pimeroni. This is, uh, yeah, Pimeroni sent us a bunch of stuff for the Pi Zero. We're slowly getting it in. This is uh, the first of them. This is a very lovely Pi Zero case. It's made out of multiple pieces of, of acrylic. It's kind of got this sky blue thing going on here. It's got all the cutouts. It's, it has supports. You can use it with... Um, you can solder in a, a header onto the GPIO port. Um, we also have a case, but this one's nice too. You have multiple options. Okay, and then this is um, hot off the press. This is right before we started the show. Mm. It's uh, it's announced. It's here. Yes, so. uh, we finally um, got this module in. So this is a really nice Wi-Fi module from um, Atmel, which is I guess now microchip. Oh, can you? Shrink it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, sure. oh this is fine too. Uh, this is a, an FCC CE Telec certified module, has an antenna built in, and um, it's a, a nice SPI interface module that um, Atmel came out with, and it's uh, also in the Wi Fi 101 shield. But they showed this to me actually like a year and a half ago, and they're like, hey, you want to make something with it? And I'm like, well, it went stable. 
Uh, and they finally really stabilized it. It's, it's pretty good, and, and it uses you know about 300 milliamps when transmitting. Um, what I like about this compared to the CC3000 is it has SSL built in, so you can do secure Wi-Fi connections. It's very, very easy. You just connect to SSL ports, and then it just works. So you don't have to like even set up anything. It has all the certificates burned in already, so it has all the, the um, security stuff already done for you. Uh, you can update them as well if you want, but if they're burned in, you just leave them, leave them be. Uh, it has three indicator LEDs, so you can tell when you're connected, when data is being sent, and there's an error LED, which you should never see lit. Um, it's uh, very, very fast. It connects very quickly to Wi-Fi. It's very, very stable. So using this with an Arduino Zero, you know, we had it running all weekend with an MQTT uh, transmission connection. And basically, just, we just disconnected it. It was running for days, very, very stably. It doesn't have the same uh, flaky disconnects that the CC3000 does where it like runs out of something inside, who knows? Um, this one doesn't have that issue. So it's a nice upgrade for if you were using something like a CC3000 or uh, another Wi-Fi module, this can add Wi-Fi to your processor and it's a lot easier to interface with than an ESP8266, which has like an AT command set and it's a little confusing and weird and like you have to like parse the packets very carefully. This is SPI, you know, when you get data, you're not gonna drop it. It's going to be, it's not gonna get lost or anything. You're going to, you know, get it immediately. And also the data transfer is very smooth. So we did some projects with the ESP8266 where we're streaming pixel data and the ESP is kind of starts and stops. It, it, it will send you a bunch of data and then you won't get it for a little bit. Uh, for most projects, maybe you don't care, but if you want to have a steady stream of data coming in, um, this Wi-Fi module is a lot more reliable in that sense. So we paired it with an Arduino Zero and it works really, really well. And I can even show a, a little yeah, demo. Yeah, let's do it. So let me turn off the LEDs. So this is Adafruit IO and it's connected live and hopefully it'll work. Um, but this is my page and I have uh, on the overhead, I'll show this, it's an Arduino Zero with this Wi-Fi module and a potentiometer. And when I twist the potentiometer, you can see that the data is being sent. So it's pretty fast. I mean, like I twist it and I let go and it stops twisting, you know, the twist. So it's, it's almost instant um, updates, very, very fast and very, very reliable. And doing this over SSL as well. So kind of nice. Okay. Now my potentiometer is just being a little floaty. But um, do you want to show the overhead real fast? And I'll yeah. Just indicate what it looks like. So. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much it. You just need six wires. There's a potentiometer that you can twist. Do you want to zoom in? Yeah, well, I'm going to... Oh, I'm, you want to... I'm going to load both up. Okay. Live. You want live. Yeah, live editing. All right. Intense. Okay, so... Um, you can twist from the side, so yeah. Oh, wait, I think I... Let me just reset it. One second. Live demo. So you can see the activity LEDs as well. So yeah, there you go. Nice. Live, live action Adafruit I.O. So you can, you can do your interactive stuff. We were doing some Adafruit I.O. projects with the CC3000 and it was kind of, it worked, but it was not fun to get working. Whereas with this, it works really well. And this module, you can also use it with the Arduino Zero, but um, I, wouldn't, I don't think you can do live stream data like that. I think it's better for like little packets once in a while. I, I, I noticed that I think there's some RAM requirements that maybe the Arduino Zero doesn't have. It, it can connect and like read a web page and, and get a little bit of data, but I don't think it, I'm not convinced that it can reliably do uh, constant data transmission. For that, you want something like the Arduino Zero, which is way faster, it has a lot more memory. Okay, and with that is new products. Thank you, Kate, and thank you, Lady Ada, for Yay. hanging out with new products.